Uh, my name is Mohamed Bardan. I'm a solution consultant here at Meta, now as part of Broadcom, and uh, happy to be part of this uh, session and uh, would like to talk more about Meta and what can we do. And basically, two main use cases here. Uh, the first one is going to be the work from home, work from anywhere, especially after the pandemic, in a huge transformation to uh, remote working and uh, uh, working from anywhere. Uh, the second one is, will be transformation to the cloud, to SaaS application, uh, to get actually that visibility when we lost uh, uh, control over it. So uh, basically, your ideal com <coughs> uh, I'm going to try to be very brief here. I just uh, set up some terminologies before I jump to a life environment where I want to show you how Appneta does work and what kind of visibility we can actually help uh, our customers uh, and, <coughs> and their network and activities. Uh, so your ID solution would have a combination of understanding and user experience continuously so that, so that you can be able to achieve that through both continuous testing via synthetic as well as having visibility into the actual traffic itself. And the basic idea here is to have both of those things. That's where the, and that's where the Appneta Performance Manager brings to market a combined approach how these metrics are presented and how we measure end user experience. It's really methodology. This is the upper part of the slide, as you can see. Uh, those are, and you can think of those like those multiple type of synthetics that are designed to understand uh, the end to end path across the network that you don't control to the cloud that you control as well. Um, so we basically need to continuously understand what that passes over the internet, how it changes, how it affects the user experience. Uh, we also want to interact with the application that a user does. So consider this like as there a Chrome browser built in within the enterprise. Uh, that interacts the application exactly the same way a user does. So we're Think of it like where we need to perform a login to Office 365 and make sure that we can access OneDrive and those critical files that we need from OneDrive are available to the account we're using. Um, and that's really the approach of the synthetics. On the passive side, oops. On the passive side uh, we're also looking at, the, at all the traffic itself that's flowing out of each of these given offices. So you know where you might have lost visibility because you only backhold all your traffic to a central point. Uh, we can now examine all the tra that traffic exiting an office, whether or not it's destined to the MPLS or it's destined to the internet directly. Uh, we will look and account for all of these applications, determine what these applications are, who is using them, and also have a characteristics of performance on these applications like network latency and application latency. And finally, be able to provide the facility of packet capture. So if you're only kind of like in the phase of troubleshooting to look at, you know, communication headers, communication setup, things of back level, uh, we all, you also have got that capability within the same platform as well. Um, I would like to just to that part here before we jump to life environment, basically on how we do it. It's basically through the combination of metrics and, and measurements. Um, and uh, we collect these measure metrics and measurements through uh, the deployment of agents, nodes, or what we call them here, monitoring points. And these monitoring points, they are the thing that do the works. Are, uh, the heavy lifting workhorses is creating those are metrics from the perspective where that end user is doing the job. Uh, so <clears throat> we need to, again, measure that to understand exactly uh, where that user is doing their job. Uh, whether that's a remote office, we want to be able to measure from there, or it's a campus location. Uh, one point that's important to mention here, the form factor of the monitoring point, the thing that does the work, it can be a physical device provided by Appneta that measures across Wi-Fi, wired, set to multiple VLANs to participate in multiple networks simultaneously. It could be a virtual machine that is deployed on VMware or KVM. It could be a Docker container that's deployed on the cloud. Or it can be a simple software that's deployed on an end user machine. And that can be the case for the work from home and work from anywhere uh, use case for today. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say here, what's the important part is you will have a ton of ability in how you choose to deploy and how you choose to collect all of these variety of these metrics. Uh, I'm going to jump to the live environment now. I just want to make 
sure that you can see my screen. Uh, I'm assuming yes. So this is AppNeta Performance Manager, a cloud-based SaaS application. You would control it like a web application, log into a browser, all the monitoring points, in, they are dispersed doing their job, and they collect those, uh, 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 and they send their meta uh, uh, data back to the AppNeta Performance Manager, where you can think of like all the command and control and the data visualization is happening. I would like to start with uh, uh, more of a, like a high level uh, view of uh, two monitoring points that's gonna cover our use cases today. One uh, is deployed in our Denver office in Colorado, and the other one is uh, a workstation agent that's deployed on my colleague's workstation in Vancouver. So what we're looking here is we are trying, we are continuously monitoring to multiple SaaS application that's typically our user would interact with. Like uh, in, this, in this example here, we have Office 365 and uh, G Suite to understand exactly how those users, whether they are working again from home, or from uh, from a coffee shop, or they are working actually at a campus location in uh, in one of our offices. To understand exactly if I hover around any of these dots, I'll be able to see exactly what that <coughs> layer three device uh, that actually we are traversing or or traffic is traversing uh, over that uh, network. Whether that's again it's an MPLS network or it's the internet. Um, um, a little bit of information about also performance metrics uh, like the round trip time in here. So again, uh, at any point, I'll be able to understand all of these layer three halves that actually we are traversing over that connection. And if I move this time slide over here, I'll be able to see all of these over time uh, to understand exactly any changes that's, hap that's impacting maybe our uh, traffic and that's resulting to a poor user experience, whether they are accessing Office 65 or G Suite. So again, understanding what that passes over the internet, how it changes, and how it affects the end user experience. If I switch this uh, view a little bit slightly here, I'll be able to see uh, these two users, whether, again, they are staying at home or at the office, and how they are connected to any of these applications. And basically, what are these domains that involved in this type of connection? What their uh, what the service provider that's carrying their uh, uh, their traffic, uh, whether again that's an office or so, is there a peering service provider actually before they are getting to the application uh, domain? Uh, in this example, uh, how we are peering with level three here to get to the Microsoft environment. So again, understanding all of these network hops along the path, uh, and basically understanding what are these domains involved. And later on, we're going to focus on where are we seeing a, when we are seeing a problem. Where we are seeing that problem, what which one is the faulty domain or the error domain? So we know actually where we should start uh, troubleshooting, or what we call it here, like the the mean time to <clears throat> to resolution, and sometimes like from a network perspective or the network team perspective, the mean time to analysis. Uh, before jumping to our to my network team, it's, it might be a, a service provider issue that we need to actually to go to, or maybe it's an application at some point. Uh, one last thing that uh, I would like to show here in this view, uh, we're basically also uh, trying to uh, let that IT team, how those users are connected, again, whether they are connected through or wireless. Uh, and we've seen it a lot like uh, from our customers' feedback that usually you, when you're trying to help uh, a user that's working from uh, their home office, uh, first, like you want to know they are connected. So we know that should we be concerned about the, how is their Wi-Fi doing or just jump directly to uh, some of the network metrics there. So again, a lot of information to actually support that uh, uh, IT team or network team that's try trying to work with these users to improve their day-to-day uh, -day experience. So uh, I would like to take an example here for uh, one of our users who are working uh, from home. Again, I'm going to take the same user that's connected from Vancouver here uh, to understand what we are trying to do here, what type of metrics we're, we're collecting. So one, lot, one more time, we're using our active monitoring, so super light touch, using our synthetics to be able to collect all of these metrics, only 10 kilobytes per second per network, and that's a huge differentiator 
uh, of how we do it compared to all, to other to our competitors. Uh, we're using that light touch to be able to look at multiple metrics. Uh, the most important one, capacity. And what's the total capacity? What's the available capacity for that user uh, in their home connection? And what's the utilized capacity here in the dark blue, as you can see? Um, very important to, to understand, especially when it comes like to uh, home network connections, those are, connections are asymmetric. So what that user is connecting, in this example, he's getting around 30 to 35 meg uh, for up, uplink uh, uh, and almost 100 meg on the downlink side. And a lot of the time that those users want to validate how what they are getting from their service provider. That they Are they getting what they sign up for or not? And uh, we're constantly monitoring that and providing <coughs> this information to the user and to their uh, to the support team that actually they are uh, helping them. Uh, one more important uh, factor is like also we are uh, putting all of these metrics in a single pane of glass to be able to correlate if there's a high utilization that's actually happening in a specific time frame. Uh, is there any correlation in the data loss that may be uh, adding to or like resulting in a, a poor performance? Uh, or maybe uh, uh, a, a poor video audio call that the user is having at this specific time, as well as is there any issue that's being added during that time frame? Latency and route round trip times are also uh, some of the metrics that we continuously look at uh, using our active monitoring testing. I would like to remind again, this is happening only with 10 kilobytes per second per network path. So. We're super light on that home user network environment. And one important uh, differentiator as well on our competitor that we are doing in this monitoring and all the data patterns for 365 days. So you'll be able to go back, compare data patterns, some of the examples we've seen in, um, uh, uh, in uh, a recent uh, uh, transformation to the work from home environment where users are start complaining, for example, at some poor quality connections or poor quality uh, video or audio calls around 3 p.m. Kids are coming back from school, turning on Netflix or uh, PlayStations, uh, overutilizing the available bandwidth that the user uh, is having in their home work environment. We'll be able to show you those, those patterns, understand exactly what the utilized capacity, what the correlation of the perspective, um, and uh, so you can that the IT team can provide the user with the right tips on maybe either upgrade available capacity or try to manage their utilization during specific time frame while they have an important video call or work call uh, <coughs> during their working time. Um, um, so uh, in this example, again, we are monitoring from an office to uh, from uh, that working from home users to one of our office in California to be able to collect all these metrics. I would like actually to show another example of what we are trying to monitor here, which can be uh, in, in this uh, monitoring to Office 365. So we don't have to have a monitoring, uh, again, uh, 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 monitoring point at the end of uh, the testing to be able to collect all of these metrics. We're able to monitor to any SaaS applications or on-prem applications you have from the user perspective, understanding what that end user experience will be uh, during this time frame. Uh, so that's an important point I would like to mention. I had to close one of my windows because of uh, sharing screen settings. So just want to get to one of the dynamic tests to be able to show it quickly. And while I'm getting this, I would like to actually run into one last metric that I'd like to show today for the user perspective, which is, since we know that real-time traffic is critical here, uh, we are also running voice over IP codecs on top of our synthetics. There's a list of codecs that you can choose from. G711 is the one running on this uh, user to be able to look at uh, important metrics such as voice loss, jitter, and most importantly, mouse score. So that can give you, when we say end user experience, we are not just throwing fancy name, this represents exactly the end user experience from where they are sitting, understanding exactly what would be mouse core, uh, whether they are Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, uh, WebEx, uh, et cetera. All of these applications, they have standard for mouse core, what they accept, and you will be able 
exactly what the level of mask or that the user is having with their connection. And uh, recently, since we we realized from our customer that uh, understanding the connection, the home network connection, when it comes to uh, their Wi-Fi users, uh, there can be some implications. So we added, we rolled up uh, out uh, a couple of features to look to be able to look at their Wi-Fi connection. What's the overall wireless quality uh, signal? What's the link speed here for that specific user? And like in this example, I can see how, how the user actually was changing from A to N uh, because of their access points having some problem there, and where that link speed is being dropped over time and causing some later on. We're able to look at the RSSI their time level. And that's sometimes important if you're having an old device, like an old printer that's consuming significant part of the airtime, the retransmit, and the number of stations that are connected to this access point. So a lot of information, again, to the user and to the IT team here to be able to support their, uh, uh, their remote users. Since, again, uh, as we have seen, uh, those remote users are, um, or um, uh, they were not ready uh, to deploy a home office environment right away. So uh, they are either working from a basement or maybe an upper floor where that wireless signal is <coughs> uh, not uh, or poor enough to provide uh, the connection that they wanted. Uh, the last metric here is our uh, home so at the point. Again, you would you you would be able to understand exactly what what are the top uh, twenty services that are running on this. A user machine from a CPU and memory perspective. Is there anything that's overutilizing that uh, user machine that maybe to, need to be restarted or reset, uh, uh, such as Google Chrome? Sometimes some of the uh, uh, virus scanners where they need to be maybe it's better to reschedule them for off working hours instead of consuming bandwidth during a specific time frame during the day. Um, back my my love here uh, that. I would like to show you what we are doing. Okay, let's say that we let all of these actually so when we are having a packet loss next. So what we're doing here at any point uh, during our monitoring, we're monitoring against a specific threshold for any metric that you choose to add to the uh, to the monitoring path. So uh, in this example, like we want to consider anything over 27 millisecond latency as a violation. So any point at any point at any time. Uh, that latency value will exceed 27 milliseconds. The monitoring point uh, will run a deep packet analysis automatically, not only to the destination application, but to every single hop of the path. To provide me with something similar to this view, what we call a diagnostic test, to understand exactly a hop by hop uh, uh, performance of, uh, of this connection, and basically to understand where that network problem happened. And as we can see, See, it looks like from uh, this office, the, the network has been clean all the way to the service provider. There was some packet loss in here, it was persistent to the Microsoft environment. So we know that the, our connection has been clean, and it looks like a service provider is having a problem peering with the application provider. So we know where we start with, should we open our ticket in terms of support? And that, that's basically what we talked about earlier, the error domain or the faulty domain. Uh, that's Maybe impacting our user performance. So we were able to define if there's a like a poor performance issue that's impacting the user, and that's the second step. And a big differentiator again in our competitors to be able to guide you where exactly the error domain that's impacting the user. We can see here in some of the network hops we have, we see a, a high delta in terms of round trip time that maybe have an impact on the user performance as well. Um, <clears throat> I would like to move now to quickly to our second module, which is the application uh, uh, active monitoring. Again, in this one, uh, you can think about it as there's a Chrome browser literally built in within the monitoring point. Here, the enterprise monitoring point that to interact with the application in the same way a user does. And basically, we need to understand what the performance of this application from multiple offices. As you can see, I'm, I'm monitoring Office 365 from multiple locations to understand exactly what would be the performance of this application from all of these offices. So basically, I'm doing a more focus on layer three, layer four, uh, from perspective on the earlier, earlier example. And now I want to look at the application layer. I want to 
hit that application, loading a home page, and perform a login. Uh, try to navigate a folder, choose a file, copy that file, and then maybe perform a lookout and see exactly how each one of these transactions as part of the workflow that maybe represent a typical user's interaction day to day on a daily basis with this application. And what would be actually the, uh, the performance of each one of these transactions? So what I'm doing here, I'm hitting uh, this application every 10 minutes. So a little bit uh, uh, less frequent compared to our active monitoring from an effort perspective where we are doing it uh, on, an, <clears throat> on a 60, min, uh, 60 seconds uh, of granularity there. So every 10 minutes, I want to let that monitoring point go to this application and perform the whole workflow and report on how exactly was the performance of each one of these transactions uh, on this workflow. And the, the important factor here is bring down that to a network and application. So server slash browser from the application side, what would be the contribution of each one of these uh, uh, parts on or, or domains on the user experience? Is this a net, always that have that question from the IT and network team? Is this a network problem or is an application problem? Again, breaking down that at, at any point in time. And at any point in time, if you're seeing any kind of like changes in the in the behavior, whether that's application or network, you'll be able to click at one of these data points. You'll, you'll have a full breakdown of uh, how these metrics are uh, presented and what are these objects and elements were loaded for any of these transactions. Uh, some information is about where we are. Our system is or the waiting is more on the uh, the waiting side. Sorry, is it like on the waiting or uh, the blocking side, uh, what you should from a network server and browser for one of these transactions. So a lot of information to provide whether that's application, web application is being uh, house built uh, within your environment, or it is a SaaS application that you would like actually to, to uh, report these metrics to the application providers uh, where you are seeing a problem. And again, at any point you're seeing uh, a violation there or a script error that's actually impacting User, you will the, the monitoring point will take us an automatic screenshot where we are seeing a problem or we're seeing uh, uh, a poor performance for that user. I know we're, right, we're running against time. Uh, one last module that I would like to see, which is our um, uh, active, uh, passive monitoring, uh, what we call usage. It's basically uh, uh, that's part of the first monitoring point, like especially when it comes like, to moving to SaaS uh, or transformation to, to the cloud, understand exactly how, what's your option or usage uh, for the application. So what there's packet engine built in our monitoring point. Look at packet, look at packet headers. There's, there are no sampling at all in this example. Or, sorry, not in, in general. Uh, in the way that we do it, uh, we'll understand exactly or automatically define what these applications are, who's using them, as you can see all the session toward this application, how much, and also have a, an understanding from uh, a performance perspective, network latency versus application latency. Each one of these two. So it's basically what we're trying to, what to do is to, to combine all of these metrics, trying to have a, a comprehensive view with the active modeling that we're doing, baselining how those users are doing uh, compared to each other, and compared to the active monitoring that we're uh, also, just to to, have, to put all of that, all of these pieces in one platform, in one uh, part. Uh, one last thing to, uh, to add here, we're also providing the facility of packet capture. So if you're really kind of like in the phase of troubleshooting and you need to look at uh, communication header location setup, uh, you've got that capability within the same platform as well. Um, and that's going to be the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And um, if there's any questions uh, uh, here, thanks again.